I'm Jack today, and for me, hunting's a passion that runs bone deep. Yep, there you go. Can you you pick? It's about sourcing food, yeah, it's a good hanging with mates, and challenging myself in the wild landscapes of New Zealand. So I'm heading on a roadie to take in some of the best hunting that this country has to offer. Bang. <laughs> so come with me to meet and hunt with the Wild Kai Legends. Today on Wild Kai Legends, I'm heading to Tatapodi on the East Coast. Heading for a hunt that'll take me off the beaten track and underwater. Armed with a spear, I'll be braving the waters near Gisborne in search of a fishy feed. Our mission is to come home with a fantastic meal, crays and kingfish, and to avoid the sharks and rays. Meet this episode's legend, Mean Dean Savage. On land, a mild-mannered business owner. But there's a lot going on below the surface. Put on a wetsuit and he's transformed into the semi-aquatic beast from the east. Getting through Gisborne is a bit of a homecoming for me. I'm looking forward to catching up with my old mate Dino and getting back in the waters I learned to dive in. And as soon as I arrive, it's time to head out. So uh, Uncle Dino, being the safety conscious kind of fella that he is, um, has decided that best thing to do, because we're going out a little bit further today, and there's a little bit of breeze, is to tuck, chuck two boats in the water. So we've got um, the black dog cat here, and then we've got his, his red beast out there on the, on the buoy there. And if anything happens, we know we're safe and we can all still get home. So it should be pretty sweet. But I'll go and help him chuck it in the drink, and we're off out there. Uncle Dino, what kind of kai we're going to find out there? It's quite a rich ecosystem out here. So you can get all your reef, uh, uh, kaimwana, you, you, you can get kina, koda, oh, yeah. uh, blue muki, not so much, no, not so many pau, you definitely don't get scallops. Um, and obviously the one that we're really trying to get hold of is uh, the kingfish, the mighty kingfish. <laughs> mighty king, so This eh? is really good habitat for kingi, a lot of foul ground. And that's our, that's our key target species, but man, yeah, if a yeah. blue monkey turns up in front of me, I'm, I'm going to take it. shoot that too. And I suppose we're on the it's east coast, we should really uh, oh, yeah. go for a coda or two, yeah. eh? It's all kai, eh? Let's get into it. See if the boys can keep up. One, two. She's a rough sea with a big swell. So old Dino's decided it's time for a dip. Savage by name, savage by nature. Time to suit up. It's a bit rough to spare a kingy, so we'll be going for kinna and craze till the swell settles down. Well, it looks like we're gonna G up, do a bit of shopping, see what's downstairs. See what tongue it all wants to give us. If you've never done it, free diving when there's tanks on board might seem a bit batshit crazy. But for me, nothing beats diving on a single breath. Heading down 14 metres to collect kina is just the introduction I need to this mission. And old Dino isn't afraid to hang around. He even takes the time to nab a crate. If you've got the lungs, why not? At these depths, the dangers are pretty minimal. But for any diver, exhaustion and oxygen deprivation can be a risk. Throw in some strong currents to work against and you've got to have your wits about you. And after a few dives, the lungs are bursting. I gotta say, there's an abundant supply of kina. But we're on a limited time frame. We want to make sure we've got time for craze. The challenge of staying under for a couple of minutes on a single breath is unbelievable. Pushing you to the limit.
Up top, the boys on board are glad to take all we've got. Back on deck, the swell's really starting to kick in. Looks like the old support boat was a good call. So it's on with the tanks and down deeper. Jack, we're going to go down on anchor. See you down there, Dino's told me a bit about the bounty down deep around the underwater reef. And I'm keen to check it out. The craze around here are legendary, but a bit beyond my freediving capabilities. With this much current, best bet is to head down the anchor line to save energy and hit the spot. A few simple rules when you're heading under. You want to make sure you do a buddy check. Stay together and keep a good eye on each other's depth and air supply. And constant communication is a must. There's an intricate system of hand signals that every diver needs to know. And that's not one of them. The pins around here offer great habitat for craze. Nestled into the crevices, crooks and crannies for protection. But these steel nooses will get us in almost anywhere. Meaning we can pick and choose without damaging craze unnecessarily. And Dean's found what we're after. Craze are canny buggers who will disappear deep into crevices. But once you've mastered the noose, you can get into all those hard to reach places. For me, just being down here is more than enough. There's a fair few crays on offer, but we're fighting some strong swells. And avoiding getting smashed on the rocks is a major consideration. but a feed's a good incentive, and we're getting our noose around plenty of craze. We're not the only ones down here looking for a feed. These magnificent stingrays glide through the water with effortless grace. And though they've got a rep, they're peaceful creatures, 99% of the time. Piss them off though, and it's a different story. A spooked stingray can plunge its sharp, venomous stinger through a wetsuit and deep into a diver's flesh. My advice? Stay out of the striking zone. But she's gone, and so are we. Heading deeper into Cray territory. There's some giants, and a lot of them. One Cray, two Cray, three Cray. And before we know it, there's a bag full. And with the feed sorted, there's time to enjoy the sight. Tomorrow's another day, and we'll be back for a shot at a kingy. It's been a cracking start to our underwater excursion off the east coast. See you down there, Jack. Day one saw us score a good feed of cray and kinnock. 
but that's just the entree. With the starter sorted, we're after something bigger, but it won't be one of these guys. Day two, and it's time to bear arms and get out the spear guns. She's looking a lot less choppy. Time to head to the pins and hunt a kingy. Well, keen as a bean, got all my gears. What's the go? Oh man, this sea is just awesome. Yes, look at the day. We're going to head out to um, Spot X. Spot X. And um, <laughs> the water's blue, so hopefully we'll see Haku, the almighty kingfish. I got some new fins, so hopefully they'll help me a little bit. Oh yeah. Race me back to the top. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that no, should be awesome today, bro. Oh, wicked. Get out there and get into it, eh? The old spot X. All I can say is she's about 10 k's offshore, but more than that, I cannot reveal. And like any top seafarer, Dino won't give away too many secrets. We've arrived at the spot, and with the support boat in tow, we drop the anchor. Conditions are perfect. Oh, bro, the viz is awesome. Yeah, so we got real good viz, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be game on today. So. Knock on wood. Knock on wood, yeah, where's some wood? Where's some wood? Whack the rukus on, we're away. We're free diving again today. Time to suit up and get in the drink. These guns pack plenty of power, but they'll take time to arm once you've unleashed. One chance, one shot, one opportunity. A couple of deep breaths and it's time to head down. The unwritten rule is you never use tanks when spearfishing. When you're in their habitat, you play by their rules. Down here, you're an ambush predator. There's no way you can chase down any kind of fish. So you just have to rely on stealth and the fish's natural curiosity to get close. You want to relax, conserve energy, and keep your movements to a minimum. The best way to proceed is to pick where you want to dive to, go all the way to the bottom, and just lie there and wait. I found when I started spearing, swimming around aimlessly was a waste of breath. Sometimes it's better to relax and let the fish come to you. And as your breath hold improves, the more you can run. After a couple of minutes underwater, I head back up. No sign yet, and I don't want to exhaust myself. Yep, yep. There's only so many of these deep dives you can do in one day. So I'm hoping we're not searching for our kingy too long. Kingy around here are unlikely to be found in the top few metres, and every time we go under, we're down for two or three minutes. Good sparrows are always good freedivers. The best are those who understand the underwater environment. There's an abundance of sea life, but no kingfish. The best way to learn is to follow an experienced spearfisherman for a day or two. And Dino's not bad, he's also a great fish spotter. And he's seen a huge school of trevally coming in.
and vibrations made from the swimming fish could pique the king's interest enough to come in for a look. Dean quickly repositions himself to drop into the schooling fish. But I'm already down there, and I'm going to have to grasp the opportunity. These fish will leave as quickly as they arrived. One shot is all I've got, and it's a blur of fish in front of me. I'm lined up. Bullseye. She's a beauty. Let's get this kingy on board. Mission accomplished. Looks like I've shown old Dino how it's done. The mighty kingfish is renowned as a powerful fighter. They can grow up to a metre and a half, and weigh up to 50 kilo. And it's all super powered aquatic muscle. Time to head back in and bring this fish on board. Old Dino's waiting, and I reckon we're ready to head back to shore. Well, oh, mission accomplished. We've got our Ika, got our Koda, got a few other tantalizing treats in the mix as well. I suppose we cruise on? Yeah, bro. And give uh, it all down to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that was epic, though, man. No, that was me. Sweet. It's us. Magic. Sure. Take off. Out of here. It's been an epic aquatic hunt, scaring the east coast of New Zealand for sweet, succulent seafood. She's been a ripper. Day one saw a score a bunch of kina and do some deep diving for craze. Day two, we got out the spear guns and the underwater archery went down a tree. Mission accomplished. Back on terra firma, and it's time to head to Dino's to prepare the catch. Old Dino has an East Coast trick he's going to share with me. It's time to de-skin the king. Hey, I'm going to show you a little shortcut. All right. Oh dear. Now that all oh. this is done. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping it'd be all but done. <laughs> I'm going to show you a little East Coast trick. Right. Did you know kingies and trevellies are hard to hard to skin? Yeah, they are. Off, so I struggled with that one actually. Yeah. So a little trick we do here, we uh, we actually skin up before the fillet comes off. Oh yeah. Mm. And you just peel it. Peel it. Ready? And that's it. Mint. Rest is yours. <laughs> <laughs> really? <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. Well, I'll uh, give this a go then. Do I? What's the best to turn it back around yep. this way? Yep. Yep. Just get started. And then get a bigger, bigger chunk of it. Yeah. I think that's better than your side. Well, you made a big mess on the other side with your spear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least there's a big mess to see. <laughs> Take your rag. Take your dry rag. You might not be overly impressed with my skinning technique, but we'll see how impressed I am with Dino in the kitchen. With a good 20 kg of meat on this beauty, there's plenty to go around. And Dino's got an old family recipe he's keen to try. Time to get this feed on the fire. We're going to do all our cooking on this plate. This thing's wicked. Yeah, it's an improvised sort of uh, hangy top <laughs> with a 
twin exhaust. <laughs> the twin yeah, exhaust, cool. you're really Cool. So uh, this is our simple recipe boat. Tin fish chunks on the hot plate. Simple as. And so what's to go with our crates? I will cook them all on here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Put Sweet. the pot on, three days. I'll boil them on the, on yeah. the pot, on the hot plate. You can cook oh, them yeah, in the pot, or you can split them and cook them on hot plate. So. Mint. Easy as me. Mint. He's an old sea dog who knows his way around the kitchen. When it comes to gathering a feed from the sea, Uncle Dean Savage is a man fit to be crowned a wild kai legend. Well, it's always nice to uh, visit and see new places, uh, but I've got to tell you, it feels better to uh, come back and see whānau from, uh, from homes away from home. I uh, like this little place, Tatapodi here, a uh, little jewel in my heart of uh, Turangi Nui Akiwa, uh, which is pretty mean, and it was awesome to go out and, and have a bit of a spear. Haven't been for a spear in a while. I've got a good kini, so I was stoked with that. I uh, got to go for a dive for some koda and see some beautiful fish life down there as well, well thanks to old Uncle Dino. Um, so that was pretty choice. But, uh, I think it almost smells like it's pretty well ready, uh, so this will be pretty much the end of my visit in Tūranganui Akiwa. I'll go have a munch and I'll catch you next week.